Hello friends, this video on garbage in garbage out part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we know about earthworm a bit, let's learn about the process of vermicomposting. So to start this process again, we either need a container or we will have to dig a pit. So that's our choice. So if you have enough space, we can dig a pit or we can take any simple container. Here we will have to ensure that the temperature is moderate. So the place should neither be too hot nor should it be too cold because as we discussed earthworms can survive only at moderate temperatures. So we have to ensure that this container or the pit is dug in a place where the temperature is moderate. Create a home for earthworms. So how can we make that environment within that container appropriate to welcome earthworms? What what we do is take that container, we add a layer of sand because earthworms live in the soil. So we will have to create an ambience like that. So we create a layer of sand, then we add some water to make it moist, like how the soil generally is. It has some moisture and we have learned that earthworms need moisture. So we will add a layer of sand, we will also add some water to make it moist and then we will add the vegetable wastes, vegetable plant or animal wastes, whatever. So we will add all the wastes. So water and air are needed for earthworms. So that is why we will have to ensure that we add water, but we do not add too much of water. Because if we add too much of water, there will be no space for air. So we will add little amount of water, sand and all the vegetable wastes. Now when all these are added, then we say that the place is appropriate to allow earthworms to live there. So we have created a home for earthworms and then we are ready to add the earthworms. So we add some earthworms. Now when the earthworms are added, they are happy there because they get moisture, they get air, the temperature is appropriate for them. They also get their food because those uh, plant wastes, they act as their food. Now. These earthworms, as they keep growing, they also keep reproducing, they also keep multiplying. So their numbers keep increasing with time. So they would need food continuously. So it, we have to ensure, so once the earthworms have been added, we have to ensure that we keep adding their food to the pit at regular intervals like vegetable or fruit wastes, coffee or tea remains. So all these things should be added there at regular intervals and proper mixing should also be done at regular intervals. We have to ensure that there are certain things which needs to be avoided. For example, salt, oil, pickle, all these things should be absolutely avoided. That's because all of these can interfere with the earthworms because earthworms, they can harm the earthworm rather. So we should also avoid meat, milk products because they might invite some disease causing organisms to and they will start growing because we are only interested in the growth of these earthworms here. Now if some disease causing organisms start growing there, they might cause diseases in these earthworms and the earthworms will start dying. So that is why we will have to avoid all of these items. So we keep mixing this at regular intervals. Taking good care of the worms will make them double in one month. So within one month, the numbers will double. If you started with some 20 earthworms, it will be 40 in a month. And then we separate the uh, vermi compost from worms because we do not so when, once the uh, compost is almost ready we need to take it out so that we can use it as a manure so what we do is we keep some food for the earthworm in one corner of the pit maybe at this corner we will keep some food so what will happen all the earthworms being hungry they will get attracted towards this end so all the earthworms will get collected at one end and we will take out the compost from the other end so that's how we can separate the vermicompost from the worms. So once the vermicompost is separated, then it is dried in the sun. And once it is dried, then we say that the vermicompost is ready. So what is the result of the entire process? Again, we get a dark soil like vermicompost. So once the vermicompost is ready, it can be used as a manure. It can be added to the other plants 
and it can enrich the soil quality there. So this process might take, so if you want to try out vermicompost at your home, this, I mean, you might get the result in a month. So the change in the texture of those wastes which because when you start this process all you see in that container are the waste materials. Initially it will smell bad. After a couple of weeks when you look at the same container you do not see those wastes anymore. You gradually start seeing some soil like thing in that uh, container which shows that the process of decomposition has already started taking place. So now because of these properties of earthworms, they are also called farmers friends. Why farmers friends? Because farmers are involved in agriculture, they grow crops and earthworms, they improve the soil fertility. They loosen the soil because of which the soil becomes airy. They also add humus to the soil. Humus is nothing but the dark colored soil which improves the soil fertility, which contains all the essential nutrients for the plants. So it adds, which in turn supports better growth of plants. So whenever you have earthworms in the soil, in the agricultural fields also, so these earthworms will keep decomposing the dead plants and animals in the soil. Now a lot of other animals also live in the soil. So th those animals also die, so their dead bodies remain within the soil. Similarly, the plants which are present, when their leaves dry, the dry leaves fall into the soil. So those dried leaves are also under the soil. So all these dead plants and animal parts, they are decomposed by the earthworms and as a result they are converted into humus and this humus adds to the fertility of the soil. So that's why farmers are happy if earthworms are present in the air fields. So, as the picture says, whenever you see an earthworm on the roadside, do not kill it or do not throw it away just anywhere. Pick it up and bring it back home and its home is the soil. So go to look at any nearby garden or agricultural field and keep throw the earthworm there so that it can live happily there and also it can benefit the plants there. So because of these reasons, earthworms are called farmers friends. So, in this entire process of composting, whether we talk about the normal composting or vermicomposting, we saw that the wastes got converted into manure. So, what are the advantages of converting the wastes to manure? It improves the soil texture, definitely. It restores soil with all the nutrients. So, the, when, when, a, when a plant was living, the plant utilized the nutrients. So, all those nutrients were somewhere present within the plants. When the plants died, the nutrients were lost. But when you convert the wastes to manure, the nutrients come back to the soil. Increases water retaining capacity of the soil. So the soil can hold good amount of water and if the soil can hold good amount of water, this water can be utilized by the plants which grow on that soil. Non-toxic Manure is not at all poisonous for any organisms which live in the soil. Eco-friendly, it doesn't harm the environment in any way. Recycle the biological product because it, when we use manure, the manure is definitely beneficial to the plants. At the same time, when we are creating manure, we are also helping the environment to get rid of the biodegradable wastes. So that, that's another, so the, it is like a double advantage. When we use manure, we are benefiting the plants directly and we are also benefiting our environment and all living organisms by uh, getting rid of the waste materials. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.